connecting us now. Um, and George, I'm, I'm just so delighted that you're able to speak to us today. And I really wish you were here so I could give you a big hug. But of course, hugs aren't a good idea in the current climate. But I do miss you. I do miss you. And I look forward to uh, a, ch a chance to where we can all get together again. Um, so uh, everyone's um, no doubt read uh, George's bio, um, so I'm, I'm not going to read it out again, but I invite George to tell you any important bits as part of his introduction uh, as we commence the meeting. Uh, over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Beryl. Indeed, in, inshallah, what we say here, soon we can meet again. Can you hear me? Yes. Of course, uh, we're looking forward again for physical, normal uh, chat and, and a conference. I really appreciate the invitation from New Zealand Peace Excellent Foundation, Dr. Robin Mann and Beryl and, and, and all the team in, in New Zealand to make this happen. And, and I think you always lead in the position of sharing knowledge among professionals related with Peace Excellent benchmarking, and, and I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Barry. So I'm just a Chilean guy with a family living in Dubai, <laughs> enjoying my time here with the family almost three years, and working in Dubai Police in Business Excellence and Benchmarking Department, we call it Excellence and Pioneering Department. And it is a pleasure uh, today, I will share some, some knowledge, some research, related with this excellent lesson learned from COVID-19. So uh, let me just start the presentation. Uh, we all know, even Dr. Roy might just say, why you have that obvious slide over there? Well, it's, it's where we're dealing with in all over the world, right? And despite the fact that organization were confronted with global health emergencies before, like SARS, uh, H1N1, Ebola, uh, many seems to have forget the lesson learned. And that's one of the, the, the important part. We are here today to discuss about uh, lesson learned. I know probably this presentation would be better. I hope in February, March, May, 2021, when probably all went back to new normal. Uh, we are not dealing anymore with uh, the fact of a uh, pandemic hate us very well. So I hope uh, this presentation can cover the last probably six, seven months, eight months for some countries. And, and we'll talk about what the organization are doing in order to deal with uh, the pandemic and how we can learn from some of the best practices. Uh, I always say that when Dr. Robin Mann is playing the train methodology or any other author around the world, in our case here, Professor Mohammed Zaidi in, in UAE, in Middle East, uh, one of the key factor in order to, to take this lesson learned is to be humble enough to recognize that we can do better. And that's one of the first step. And so it is important to, to, to have open mind in order to, to really take this lesson learned and move forward stronger than before. So, uh, probably you read this before, uh, and the power of the crisis is that the people become focused. Everyone agrees what the goal is or should be. In this crisis pandemic 2020, COVID-19, we have been become laser sharp on our priorities. That brings a lot of clarity. And, and, and I hope that happened to many organizations. Uh, I know for, for a fact, uh, uh, one of the best way to understand what are exactly your priority is when you, your organization have a clear uh, value proposition. And the value proposition is uh, understand what for your customer and stakeholders. When you have a value proposition and you offer low cost airline ticket or you offer the safest city in the world, which is our case in Dubai police, everything we do, we focus to keep Dubai the safest place in the world. Everything you do to offer the best ice cream, the most flavory ice cream in the world, uh, is focused on the value proposition. And that's what the customers, the citizens, the stakeholders value. That, that, that's he'll help you to understand that every process, every initiative, every uh, project need to aim 
to satisfy the customer, the stakeholders in your value proposition. So I think this crisis, this pandemic, uh, being helping a lot of organization to understand what exactly is the point of uh, focus your, your priorities. And it's all about that. It's, it's all about what exactly we need to focus on and how to add value to our customer 24-7. Um, I have some, some graph for you to share with you guys about a different point of view in the last probably six months, what happened in, with COVID. I, know, I don't wanna spend time on this, but just I wanna to share with you how are the, the market in this case, stock market outbreak uh, since the start of the pandemic seems in, in some countries January, in our case in, in Dubai, February, in my own country in Chile, March, and, and we can move forward. But everything, as you see the, the, the screen over here, went down and, and, and so for other countries still uh, difficult uh, to improve uh, this, this graph, right? Uh, Dan Johnson 13.3 uh, went down like in the heat part was in the end of March. And now it's recovering around 13.3 percent, but it was down like around 36 percent. And and all this uh, graph, what I'm showing is the reality how the the pandemic hit us. For example, world economy is struggling with rising unemployment rate. Uh, I know for many countries uh, that be below six seven percent of unemployment was a great uh, rate. But now we are seeing double digit in most of the developed countries' economies. So it's, it's, it's tough, it's not easy. And, and, and that's what uh, many organizations, many country government and, and focus in order to help to recover the economy. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis has posed a number of uh, severe challenge for business, for all type of business. Uh, when I say here the unemployment rate in, in, in this screen is the relationship, the partnership between the government and the private um, sector in order to, to both a, a sector focus to recover the economy, uh, produce more, uh, more jobs opportunity, helping a small medium enterprise organization to, to perform better and try to find the, the path to, to recover, to survive, right? Uh, so we can see, and let me see, you can see huge drop in choppers. Uh, you look at the numbers and until end of June, 2020. For example, Latin America and Mexico during the lockdown, uh, they hit almost 87% of a huge drop in choppers. But in, in the pen of the industry, for example, I don't know how many of you watch Netflix, but I remember seeing a, 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 a screenshot of Netflix, the result, by the end of April 2020, uh, they increased the business uh, around the world around uh, 45%, 68% increase in Asia, 55% uh, increase in South America. And, and that, that happened with different types of business. Uh, for example, all the delivery, all the digital transformation that helping a small medium enterprise or big large corporation in order to perform better, uh, they have different statistics that this huge drop in choppers. Uh, you can see Airbnb, uh, Uber, Karim, and Dubai, UAE, how they went down because no use in the service. And we can talk about this for, 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 for many more minutes, but it's not the, what we're here for. I just want to give you some, some uh, statistic and what is the reality that we are heading now. Depend of the city, the country that you are living now, the context might be different, but we have one thing all in common that we are facing uh, the major uh, crisis in, in the history of the world with this pandemic 2020 and in different ways, an economy way, in customers, and the way that we are dealing with our partnership, uh, supply chain, operational excellence, etc. For example, uh, Dubai, uh, we are around, in Dubai, around 5 million people. And 
In December 2019, they passed around 90 million passengers through Dubai Airport. 20-25% uh, of them stay in Dubai as a tourist. So Dubai is your uh, hub for tourists, right? But look how the, the, the tourist industry went down worldwide uh, from 2019 to 2020, dropped around 35%. Uh, Dubai opened business for tourists again July 7th. So in the last three, four months, it's been recovering, but still hit for, for some business like restaurants, hotels, hospitality business, and suffering all over the world. And, 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 and I would say that when I was talking before the, the presentation with Beryl and, and Dale and, and Robinman, that uh, every country, every city have a different context. For, for us here in Dubai, uh, one of the main GDP come from uh, tourists. So tourists for us is, uh, is a major thing. So when we, and Dubai police, when we say we want to approach, we want to make sure that Dubai is one of the safest city in the world, uh, the tourists uh, have around 95% of them in the customer service, uh, they, they are delighted to fly to Dubai. They're happy to be here because they feel safe. And, and during the pandemic, uh, now since July 7, the tourist is still recovering a little bit, but not the number that we used to have a year ago. So the, the experts say that probably we'll be back to, to normal, new normal uh, numbers, statistic, um, probably for summer 2021. But as you know, people do not come, less people come in summer in Dubai because the weather is super hot. So most of the tourist people start flying now from September to April, May next year. And, and that's it, the, the industry of uh, tourist travel tourists around the world. Uh, let me go, move forward. So how can we formulate strategy in the face of uncertainty? And, and that's a, one of the main challenge for every organization. It doesn't matter, it's a small, medium enterprise, large corporation, it's, it's, it's a huge uh, gap that they need to fill. That's a huge opportunity as well uh, to see what exactly is the, the strategy that we need to follow now with this pandemic. So that's a key question leader must ask. They prepare for the future. And in the midst of the global pandemic, answering never felt more urgent. So as soon as possible, many of you probably would like to push this button and say, you know what, push to reset the world. But we cannot do that? No, right? We need to move forward. We need to, to be able to engage our employees, to engage our stakeholders, partnership, and move forward together stronger but it's, it sounds like pretty easy, but it's not, uh, especially when you are, one second, okay. Especially when, when you are uh, facing difficult time, uh, it's difficult to, to compare. It's, it's not easy to compare to say what happened in, in Auckland, New Zealand, Dubai, UAE, or Santiago, Chile, because every city, every country have a different reality. But I hope every, everyone, every leader, every CEO, general manager, mayor, ministry uh, can ask this question and try to answer it uh, as soon as possible because uh, the, the strategy, the way that we, we thought that's going to be 2020 is not. Uh, we need to think if our value proposition is still exceeding the expectation of our customers. Uh, I can talk about Dubai police. Uh, we measure every single day if the citizen, if the tourist, the investor of Dubai feel like Dubai is still a safe place to be. And for us, everything we do is to, to help this city to be the safest city in the world. And I can show you, or I can provide you some international index related with this uh, rate, crime rate, etc. numbers that the the position of Dubai police has been in the top 10 
for the last 10 years in different uh, international index. So it's not, it's, 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 it's about execution. It's, just, it's not just about changing the mentality and move forward with the strategy. It's how well you can execute and, and that's a big, big uh, opportunity. That's one of the most important part. How can you execute well? And during the, uh, the, 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 the pandemic, one of the major questions related with this topic are, there is a feasibility strategy plan that can lead to be excellent in time of difficult timings and turbulence? What are the priorities and main goals that they have to be set. Because probably the priority back in December 2019 changed a lot in February, March 2020. So can we adjust? Can we modify? Can we do something related to execute well? Because living this new normality context change a lot. So based on your business, based on your value proposition, based on how well you are executed, everything you did, everything you promised to your customers, it might change. Can business excellence strategy focus on this goal, truly safeguard and survival and prosperity? It's hard to, to answer. It's hard to say, yes, yes, business excellence will help you to focus, will help you to have the right strategy and will help you to execute well. I don't think so, it's like that. It's a combination of many things. Is getting things done, like uh, I will talk about people, the strategy, and operation. Uh, it's, it's not easy, right? How can the organization improve the future response? And, and how, how can you respond uh, and it's not too late? Uh, because you still in, in business, you still compete with others, you still uh, uh, facing lack of digital transformation, lack of uh, communication with your customers lack of a good leadership thinking in the future and, and engaging your people to, to join the boat and, and ride the same, the same road the same way. So the, lesson, the leverage lesson learned to create value and emerge, and, and emerge stronger uh, are different. I just uh, point out here five main lessons and and we can talk about it after my presentation. You can ask me questions. By the way, this presentation is yours. I can share with you at the end of the presentation, I have my email, WhatsApp and LinkedIn. If you wanna ask me any question after the presentation and we don't have the time to do it, please feel free. Okay, lesson number one, not working at the speed of the customers. We heard this before many, many times. There are many authors talk about how important it is to, to be in the same level of your customer, to exceed the expectation of your customers. Uh, one author that I like a lot, the way that he's been writing related with uh, management is called The Future of Management by Gary Hamel. Uh, 2008, I think is this book, 2009, something like that. Gary Hamel, the, the Future of Management. And in the book talk about a lot about uh, management, of course, uh, operational excellence, customer expectation. And one of the things he talked about, can we make sure that we are on the same level, that we are talking the same language, that we are exceeding the expectation of the customers? That's uh, one, a plus, especially during the, the, the coronavirus during this time, right? So crisis amplify flows the pace of which the coronavirus has not only magnified, but also accelerated the damage this flow create, has been eye-opening and replayed with lessons to be learned. Today, we see mid-sized company, small, uh, medium enterprise company scrambling to activate digital transformation with customer employees. Uh, for some of them, it could be already too late. They, they are out of business. Uh, I remember during the lockdown, I was traveling to Chile for 10 days from Dubai. And while I was there, Dubai closed the border. So I ended to be with my family in Chile for three months. And, and I remember seeing uh, at the first few weeks uh, how the delivery service, supermarket, uh, 
restaurants uh, try to, to offer everything by online service uh, through digital transformation, but you can tell that we're not ready. Uh, you order a burger and they bring you an ice cream. You order a, a new teacher and they bring you a jeans. Those kind of things make you to feel that the company were not able, were not ready for this. And that's okay, but and how how that happened? Imagine three months, I mean six, eight months ago. If we are working in digital transformation for the last I don't know two three years, for sure those organizations those organizations would be better and better shape in order to satisfy the, the customer expectation. For example, think about in the public sector. As Dubai, Dubai police, we're a public organization. Uh, we follow the best practices around the world using trade methodology from Dr. Robin Mann from New Zealand. And, and we did a project in 2019, 18, and we saw the public sector using digital transformation. And, and one of the best two countries in the world was Estonia, Singapore, uh, offering everything online, everything. Uh, without paperless, uh, I mean, with paperless, without a uh, bureaucracy of the regular service through digital transformation. But they're doing this for the last 10 years. 97% of the service, public service in Estonia use digital transformation. So that means that they were ahead already with the crisis. Lesson number two, use adaptive problem solving from better decision making. Teams that solve problems as a team are share accountability for the outcomes and are better meet, meeting deadline, deadline than those teams that rely on individuals to make decisions. And that's true. Uh, in, in our case, as a Dubai police, we've been learning from different police forces around the world. And one of the police forces that we've been learning is a Singapore police force, New Zealand police, I say my, say my greetings to Mike Bush, who used to be the commissioner of New Zealand police, and he retired in April 2020, I think. Uh, London Metropolitan Police, and other police forces around the world. And one of the things that they have in common when the accountability uh, make uh, as a team is better performance than trying to do it as an individual. And we know that, right? An approach that leverages the skill and resources of many people is likely to generate a greater number of good solutions as a team, right? So uh, in the context that we are living, uh, we try to make, or oh, it's better to make a solution uh, working together as a team that rather than individual. Forward. Lesson number three, not thinking about the future in a different way. Probably very obvious. Those business leaders who believe we will return to business as usual are the huge disadvantage. We all know that we are living a new normality, reality, new life. I don't know how they call it, but everything changed. Everything changed because now the mask, Sanitizer are part of your uh, personal uh, things that you carry 24 seven. And, and you freak out when you're in the parking lot and say, oh my God, I lost my mask. How do, where I left my mask? And you, in Dubai, probably in New Zealand as well, you cannot go anywhere without a mask. Uh, Dale was talking about in Minneapolis a little different, but some people use masks, some people doesn't use. But in Dubai it's mandatory. Just to give you an idea, if you go to a public space, a park, a beach, any public area, you will get a fine of around 1,000 US dollar if you are without mask. So everything changed, right? Lesson number four, set up an execution excellent. Set up execution excellent. Just because the time are fraud does not mean that the leader need to tight control on micromanaging execution rather than a positive, of course. 
Because conditions are so difficult, frontline employees need to take on more responsibility, responsibility for execution, action, and collaboration. Again, frontline employees in Dubai police are the police officers that they are driving the patrol, they are on the metro, they are on the tourist areas, and they are dealing with the with control the pandemic. Uh, we use a smart uh, helmet uh, that you can control the temperature of the people around you, and you can find if somebody have more than 36.5, 37 Celsius, and they can call the ambulance, the emergency department, the healthcare authority, in order to 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 see to put you aside if you, if you might have potential coronavirus, but these people, these uh, guys, are in the front line, uh, thinking to reduce, trying to help the society in Dubai to understand how important it is to 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 control the COVID nineteen, right? Because spread out. Uh, is, 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 is the, the thing that we need to prevent in order to have a normal life. I was talking to, to, to Dr. Robin Manobero before. Uh, yesterday was one of the peak um, number of cases per day in Dubai, 1,000, around 1,500 cases one day. And since April that we have around 1,300 cases, yesterday was the worst day. But the good part, we are open to business, here is open since July 7, and restaurants, malls are open, school, work, we can come to work. And because it was difficult, I don't know how many of you still work in distance, and, and it's not easy, but I'm, in my case, I'm very happy that we went back to, to the office. And lesson number five, a cultivate extraordinary partnership. Partnership is, is a key part before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and after the pandemic. Partnership uh, with your stakeholders is, is a key. Working with partner is a routine, but the speed of action only goes so far if other players in the ecosystem fail to move just as fast. Uh, it's, it's, we need uh, our partner in order to be successful in Dubai Police. You guys need your partner in order to be successful in your own business. Uh, so a partnership, the, the key partners are the ones that help you to add value to your customers, to the citizens, in our case, citizens and tourists of Dubai. Because uh, in our case, for example, RTA, Road Transportation Authority, uh, Ambulance, Civil Defense, help us to perform better. Uh, so, partnership in, in any business is critical, but uh, during the pandemic, we've been seeing how important it is to have a clear, transparent uh, process relationship with your partners in order to, to survive, in order to perform better, in order to achieve uh, the customer expectation about your product or service. So those five lessons uh, that I'm sharing with you now are probably one of the, I'm sure there might be 10, 20 or 30, and I'm sure we can get more uh, during the process of October to March, April, 2021, when we can discuss after the pandemic and we, we can take action of this lesson learned. But so far, that's what I'm seeing the last six, seven months especially in, in our case in Dubai police and other organization in the Middle East. So moving forward, the three, the three core process of execution, the discipline of getting things done. Uh, one author, his name is Ralph, uh, Ralph Smith. In 2007, he launched a book called uh, Balance Scorecard and BPM. Balance scorecard and business process management. How they link together, how we balance uh, our strategy, our operation, our system technology. And, and one of the three key factors in order to be successful with execution, with the discipline of getting things done, are strategy, the right people on board, and 
execution premium operation, how we can deal with the daily operation. Uh, it's not about changing your strategy because the pandemic and now everything has to be online, digital transformation, innovation, everybody talk about it. But the big challenge and how you want to execute it, uh, it's not about uh, offering you a menu from the apps that you can choose any breath at this moment. And, and the, the, the thing is, that's a marketing strategy to capture new customers. But how you want to deliver the breakfast, uh, that's the, the big challenge. And during the pandemic, we've been seeing a lot of uh, opportunity for improvement in the operation side and the supply chain management and how we operate under these conditions, which are totally uh, unexpected and totally challenging and totally uh, different that we used to deal in the past. So th those are one of the, the, the most important uh, part. Uh, let me go back one second. So let me see where I am. Uh, I, I mentioned it before, uh, but I want to say it again. Uh, digital transformation is being one of the most critical fact of a organization dealing with, with the, during the pandemic. Acceleration of digital tech and analytics is already a cliche. The COVID-19 crisis has accelerated the shift to digital, but the best companies are going further by enhancing and expanding the digital channel. They are successful using advanced analytics to combine new resources of data with their own insight to make better and faster decisions and strengthen their link to customers. But strengthening the customer in order to satisfy and to accomplish your value proposition. Digital transformation will help you in order to, to, to achieve what you promise to your customers, to achieve what you promise in your product or service uh, to exceed the expectation of your customers. But with a clear strategy, and a clear execution, digital transformation can be part of your business excellent uh, framework, can be part of your, uh, your business excellent execution. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of business you are, public or private, small, medium enterprise, a large corporation. In our case, Dubai Police, we're around 25,000 people between civilian and, and police officer. And uh, we've been, Shifting uh, the digital transformation seems, I don't know, easy seven, eight years ago. So during the, the pandemic, uh, we, we did a lot of transactions by digital. Uh, for example, those of you like Dr. Robin Mann have been here before in Dubai, we have a smart police station, SPS, small, smart police station. It's the only uh, police station in the world without human interaction. And um, during the lockdown in April, um, the beginning of April until the beginning of May, uh, during this time of lockdown in Dubai, uh, we did double of transaction through digital, uh, digital channels in Dubai police, that regular police station. Uh, we have are already around 14 smart police stations in Dubai and customers, citizens, tourists feel very close to Dubai police when they walk into a police smart police station and you do any service, more than 60 service uh, with uh, just without human interaction, just with machine. And if you want to talk to somebody, you can call the control room and there will be somebody from our control room center answer your question. And if you lose your passport, and somebody steal your watch, anything, more than six service. So we launched the first one back in November 2000, 2017. So this year has been three years with the smart police station. And that's what we call it in our case, a digital transformation to approach to be close to our customers. Uh, 24 seven. So 
seeing all of the uh, this excellent framework around the world, in our personal experience, in our uh, Dubai police experience, I can tell you that uh, using, in our case, the Dubai 4G, Dubai government excellent program uh, framework in order to perform better, in order to have a clear path where we go in in Dubai police, being helped us uh, before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and I'm sure after the pandemic. So, uh, in my personal opinion, I recommend uh, all the organization, uh, like in New Zealand, for instance, uh, using the Peace Excellent, give you a, a guideline, give you a, a framework uh, to see what are your strengths and what are your opportunities for improvement. And I'm sure. Uh, during the pandemic, the opportunity for improvement uh, been uh, increasing. Uh, the big challenge is what's going, what are you willing to do in order to reduce it, in order to prepare a plan, in order to perform better, and in order to exceed the expectation of the customers. So it doesn't matter which one you use it of the Business Excellent Framework, at least we will help you to guide uh, your business uh, performance better uh, without the framework, this excellent framework. At the same time, in Dubai Police, we use a trade best practice benchmarking methodology. Uh, Dr. Roman will tell me probably later, but it's been more than 10 years. And actually in the last three years, uh, Dubai, uh, we learned this initiative from Dubai Excellent, uh, Government Excellent Program, uh, helping a public organization to join in a project in order to learn each other and to perform better. Uh, it, we use trade in Dubai police and, and I, I can tell from my own experience in working in Dubai police using trade methodology has been uh, a very successful, very helpful uh, tool in order to see what are the best practices in order to know invent the wheel and in order to, to being humble enough to recognize that there are other police forces, other companies, because we, we with train methodology, we don't just look in police forces or law enforcement agencies. We also see what are the best practices in BMW, uh, New Zealand Airline, uh, any Singapore uh, engineering technology. It doesn't matter, no matter what sector you are, with this methodology, with this tool, it help you to see what are the best practices and take them and use it. Um, and, and, and during this hard time, I'm 100% sure that the best practice is being one of the best tools that we use in, in the Bible. Uh, so tracking lesson, lesson learned and understanding what went wrong and what went well is critical. Organizations need to learn from past experience and identify improvement opportunities. And my recommendation would be sex and framework will help you to understand what are the improvement opportunities. No matter how well prepared the organization was before the pandemic, some things go wrong simply because you can plan everything. Something go wrong, because I'm sorry, plan everything. A post-crisis review compromised both technical investigation into costs and event, including, for example, root cause, an assessment of effectiveness of response. So the opportunity, don't let good learning go to waste. Learning and adaptability has been on CEO's agenda for some time but even more so during the pandemic. In the last few months, some of the best leadership teams have been on a step, steep learning curve. Learning how to lead in a time of crisis, learning how to manage rapidly forming agile teams, making decisions at much faster pace, and learning to adapt. Learning to adapt uh, is one of the, 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 the critical part. Forward thinking companies are now accelerating 
their capabilities building effort by developing leadership in a critical thinking skill at different levels of the organization, increasing their employees' capacity to engage with technology and use advanced analytics, building functional skills for the future, such as next generation procurement, industry 4.0 manufacturing, digital marketing, and sales. I think we are in a, in a really, uh, we're living, uh, dealing with a difficult timing, but uh, one of the best uh, things that we can take from this COVID-19 is don't let good learning go waste. Uh, we need to take action. We need to have our learning experience. We need to have our learning lesson and apply it. Because as we know, in my, I don't know, five years, 10 years later, we will hit another pandemic or another natural disaster or anything that will question why you guys didn't learn if you already have some past experience. You've been dealing with this new, it's nothing new. So my personal uh, ending now, my presentation, one of the, the, the most important part for any advice in the lesson learning is learning to adapt. Learning to adapt is a key part of business. Uh, seeing the new context, seeing the, the, the value proposition and if the customer are adding and follow your, your product, your service, because you are uh, promised your value proposition and you are accomplished your value proposition to them. So we heard this before, Charles Darwin, 1809. It is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent that survive. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. And, and that's and 100% indeed agree with this uh, quotation uh, because we need to adapt to the new normality, the new life that we are living now. And, and I know many organizations, no matter in the public private sector or the side of the company, will perform better if they understand how to adapt uh, to the to the organization, uh, to the new context. Uh, I just wanna, before I finish my presentation, uh, one of the things that happened to me and my colleague, Dr. Brennan Kitpas in Chile during the lockdown, uh, we, we began a journey of writing, in my case, my second book, it was the number seven, I guess, uh, together and we started like in end of 2018, but believe me, during 19, it was very little work. And during the lockdown in Chile in three months, we did probably the best of 2019, 12 months, in three months, we accomplished better results. So since June, 2020, our book is available in Amazon called Business Process Management Applied to BSX and Benchmarking, an ebook and paperback. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, 45 minutes, I wanna be straight to the time. I'm really looking forward to answer some questions. I really appreciate it, Dr. Robin Mann, Barry, uh, for the invitation and, and for the opportunity to be with this morning with you guys. Yeah, we've got one question for you. Um, George from, from Karoo, he says, has the Dubai crime rate gone down or up during the pandemic? And have, has the uh, Dubai state reduced any police services as a result of the pandemic? Let me see the first one. Has Dubai crime rate gone down mm -hmm. up during the pandemic? Well, it, it has been Interpol, Europol, and all the agencies. Uh, one of the crime that went up during the pandemic, cyber crime. Uh, oh. So the cyber crime has been up. Knowing Dubai, I'm talking about global, and it's one of the, the major, uh, work that we are dealing now with all the cyber finance, uh, all types of cyber crime, of course. But uh, in, in Dubai was uh, even better than in 2019 compared with 2018 and 19. Second question, has the Dubai state reduced any police service as a result? No, no at all. 
We even increased the services uh, because uh, during the lockdown, Dubai police was uh, with the crisis and management team of Dubai agency uh, to cooperate with the ambulance, civil defense, and other partnership like RTA and Dubai police in order to, to help the citizens to, to stay safe. So we've been even increasing the service that we offer to our citizens and tourists in Dubai. They'll have a question from Minneapolis. I know they'll answer is like one, two o'clock in the morning in your city, but happy to answer your question. Okay. Can I ask uh, email? Yeah, yeah, you can you can you can ask a question, please go ahead. Okay, yes, thank you. Um my question is um your conclusions and what you presented here are very consistent. I did a study on COVID around the world and a published a report, uh, and we're gonna have a conference uh, sponsored uh, with the Filipino um, Society of Equality in November, but really it gets to the point of you, you mentioned you got four, five, six, whatever the number of frameworks, and a lot of the research over the last five, 10 years that Dawn Ringrose has done from Canada says, maybe we got five or 10% of our organizations in the world that are doing this business excellent stuff. And my question is, how do we get more countries doing this? I mean, we cannot exist as a planet, in my estimation, by having five or 10% of our organizations doing excellence and the rest are doing some of the stuff you talked about, which is we're not learning from the past, we're repeating the past. So how do we get more? I'm focused on you know, getting these excellence frameworks and organizations out at perhaps a country level. Because what I face here in the United States, we've got a dilemma. Government is not using excellent frameworks. We've got the Baldrige people, they're doing great stuff at their own level, but it's having no impact in the White House. It's having very little impact at the state level. So we cannot exist with just five or 10% of organizations doing it. So how do we get these frameworks in a much more holistic way out to the rest of the world? Thank you, Dale. Very interesting question and very difficult yeah. to answer. I know, I'm not looking at it early for, you know, here's the solution, but that's what I'm addressing and trying to get our people like this that are on these calls to think in those terms. Thank you, Dale. In my personal opinion, it don't say around 5, 10% of the organization, I'm extremely, extremely happy to see that there are organizations using uh, the basic excellent framework. In our case in Dubai, it's mandatory. All the public organizations use the Dubai government excellent program, the 4G. We evaluate since 1997 uh, the performance of our organization using the basic excellent framework. I didn't see probably Dr. Robin might have more experience of that, uh, sharing with us uh, other government around the world using, uh, like probably Singapore, of course, uh, but the majority of the, the the majority of the government around the world do, do not use uh, this excellent framework. And actually, if you look South America, it's even worse. The, the reality is really bad. But I can, if you took, if, Let's talk about Europe. If you use the EFQM, more than 35,000 organizations use the EFQM in, in, in Europe and even in the Middle East or all over the world. And you can see the result in the long run. I'm not talking about six months, I'm talking about 10 years, 15 years. You change the mindset, the DNA, the culture, performance, looking always to do better, always to, to, to improve your performance. Now, how we can increase, I, I don't see increasing. It's going to be really, really difficult. I would love to see simple using form of this excellent framework. I would love to see a high school kids. I would love to see primary, secondary kids learning from quality path, learning from quality. The, remember, excellence is a journey, but some, for some organizations start late. I wish we can teach the, this not on the university level. I wish we can teach this in pre I mean, not preschool, I would say secondary school, high school. Yeah, and yeah. you have new leaders to understand that quality is a, a, a way to live, it's a philosophy. It's like right. the Harley Davidson guys. They have a yeah. philosophy. 
We need a philosophy of equality. I'm totally yeah. agree with you. But increasing this excellent framework used by organizations around the world, probably Dr. Robin Mann will help me, but I don't see any positive trend in the next 20 years. But I you guess think? you're right for realistic, but my sense is having seen what we face in terms of climate change, and if you just take this 17, 18 year old woman from the United Nations, from Sweden, that said, in terms of climate change, we as leaders ought to be ashamed. We are not facing the world's problems for what they are. And so there's a lot of expectation out there that we don't have 30 years, we have 10 or 15. And if that, so to take the position, while it's difficult, I'm saying you got to step it up and make a way to having. So that's why I'm just trying to build an awareness. That's all. Fair enough. Thank you, Bill. We do, and we do have another question coming up. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. So first of all, thank you so much uh, for so detailed uh, presentation on uh, what are the lessons learned uh, for all of us. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I have some of the questions, not one. The first one uh, that I would like to start is, I mean, most of the organizations, whether it's in uh, New Zealand, because I'm in New Zealand right now, so whether it's in New Zealand or in India, Dubai, or United States, most of the organization, I think, uh, did not had any plan, the risk management plan, when it comes to any of the pandemic. And uh, so what, what are your thoughts, whether the pandemic has exposed those organizations that they didn't had any sort of plans and that's why there was a huge impact on uh, whether it's, it's on their stakeholders, whether it's on their image, whether it's on their stocks, and uh, I mean, everything for, for that organizations. And that's why they had this mass layoff because there was an impact on their revenue and uh, they cannot survive. So what, what's your thought on, on that first? Thank you, uh, Bikash. Uh, I wanted to say like, most organization, the problem is they don't have a vision. They don't have a long-term vision. They just focus on the daily operation and they, they, they see the fruit and, and that's it. And then do not move forward to see what is the path in the next. Listen, I was uh, reading one article in, in New York Times like two weeks ago, uh, really with this question as well. Because, uh, most of the people, most of the organization before the pandemic in a strategy point of view, uh, even different author around there, Robert Kaplan, David Norton, Prahalat, uh, uh, Alexander Oxerwalder, they talk about, yeah, well, before the pandemic, a short-term plan could be six months, one year, mid-term plan could be two, three years, a long-term plan could be five to 10 years. But now during the pandemic, we learned that probably a short-term plan can be one day for a business, restaurant business. A long-term plan could be a week. So everything changed. But when you have a vision and you have a clear vision, and you know exactly what is your strategy, and you know exactly what you promise to your customers, and your value proposition is clear, and they understand, they buy your product, your service because of that, it's, I don't wanna say it's simple, but it's easier, it's better to achieve what you promise. The problem is again, and totally agree with you, many companies do not have a vision, they don't think in the future, even the future is next week or next year or 10 years later, mm -hmm. they just focus in operation, operation daily basis. Right. Yeah. So, so continuing on, on, on to that, uh, one, I'm sorry if, uh, for for all of the people who are waiting to ask the question in the queue. Uh, I, I just want to continue with that. Uh, so, yep. so got two more waiting. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Thank you. Bro. Uh, so, continuing on, on to that question, and uh, 
as you have said, most of the organizations are not into the infinite games, as also said by Simon Sinek, one of the author of uh, Infinite Games. Yes. So he, he said the same thing that most of the organizations are uh, focused on the short term uh, goals and, and short term priorities and that they have not in the infinite one. But now when I mean, the big organizations, the organizations which were able to adopt based on the technology, for example, Amazon and, and I think most of the IT, IT organizations, they didn't have any much impact because all their work was online. They had employees uh, already working from home and uh, all the data were on the cloud and they can share things. What about the organizations, for example, the small organizations which were not equipped for uh, this transition towards the online thing? And uh, should the government interrupt here now saying that uh, all the registered organizations that we have all over the world, I mean, specific to the country wide, should the government now interrupt and in saying that, so you are a registered organization and what's your plan if something happens like this in future? Because it will have a direct impact on the customers. It will have a direct impact on the employees because if you're not able to uh, uh, survive in those conditions, you will have uh, the mass layoffs, yep. right? And uh, then it will have an impact on, on the employees. It will have an impact okay. on the customers and overall, uh, over the community as well. Yeah, some good points. Some good points there. What are your thoughts on that, George? I'm just uh, conscious of time, and we've got some other people lined yeah, up. Yeah, if you don't yeah, mind that's me. it. That's it from Forgive my side. Forgive me for interrupting you. <laughs> cool. I, I know, and I, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's exactly the same. Uh, in the government point of view, uh, there are many statistics, but uh, we learn probably the most important: chop down the whole country, the whole world, the whole cities. It's been one of the biggest mistake. Uh, and actually we will see in the future a scientific article referred with this, but more people are dying because other disease than mm -hmm. the pandemic. And it's a true fact. And so we need to make decision based on what is good for every sector, not just for economic, for health. And the government have to have the capability to put everything in balance and to learn what to do in the next a crisis or pandemic, my friend. But send me an email, I will answer to you and we can chat, okay? That's great. Yeah. Now, um, is it, uh, Thank you. Me if I pronounce your, your name uh, improperly, is it Amlan? Uh, yes, Amlan. Am I audible? Yes, you are. You were a bit funny there for a minute, but you're sounding good now. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. My, I think the video is a bit blurry. Pardon that. Okay, okay, so the questions I have, uh, firstly, I think my first question is uh, kind of covered by a couple of people before me, but what I wanted to understand uh, uh, from uh, Mr. Jorge or anybody else on the call is, uh, I think it, it would be a fair assumption that uh, the current pandemic uh, that we are in, I don't think it is the last one we are going to face, uh, let's say in the next uh, few years. Uh, the way things are progressing and there are reports coming from different parts that uh, some other outbreak is uh, there. Uh, so my first question is, are we, you know, as a community, really prepared for future pandemics? Because like Vikash, I think some of the larger organizations are probably uh, better, uh, reasonably well equipped to face the pandemics. But what about uh, most of the enterprises, the vast majority of which are not really that uh, mm -hmm. well equipped in terms of funds or other resources? Right. What's your thoughts on that one? <laughs> it's a tricky one, isn't it? Okay, Robin, uh, I don't know about the people. It's very tricky. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree with him. Yeah, I don't think the big ones are that well prepared either, to be honest. <laughs> but 
But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd just like to say yeah, something. Yeah, I, 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 I think, know. Uh, I, I meant in a, in a comparative way. Yes. Robin? No, I was going to say, which relates to the previous point by Vikash as well. I mean, it's if you find a whole, no, never mind organisations, you find whole governments not prepared whatsoever, and they all go into a state of firefighting. Uh, luckily, New Zealand was better at firefighting than most other countries, but um, none, none of, the, not very few of the countries were actually prepared for something like this. A few Asian countries were, mm. um, yeah. so. Again, if it happens again, are we confident that the learning has been taken in by the governments? I'm not so sure because again, they don't understand excellence. They don't have all the systems in place. Mm -hmm. And even with the New Zealand, which has done quite a good job, there's been really gaps in the system in terms of the quality management system supporting, um, well, trying to make sure that uh, the virus doesn't come back into the country. So there's been major lapses, which should be easily addressed by the knowledge we have on quality management. Um, so, and this comes back to Dale's question is how do we change all this, which is, <laughs> which, which is quite a daunting prospect to, to actually change the situation on a worldwide uh, perspective. Yep. But it's got to start with the leadership of each country. And that's why Dubai is a good country to learn from because they fully embraced excellence. Mm, well said. Thank you, Robin. Now sure. we've got a question for Santosh okay. has been very patiently waiting. I'm, uh, so Amlan, can, can we can give Santosh one more question, please? Very quick one, very quick, because Santosh is waiting and we're running no, out of time. Uh, right. So uh, a general observation that I have made over the years is that quality as a field of education is very much ignored because proper, uh, you know, uh, departments or programs dedicated to quality worldwide are very few compared to other, other subjects, yep. right? So maybe this is something that, uh, you know, universities or institutions across the world should be looking at. Yeah, Indeed. definitely. Yeah, that's my basic observation or question. Thank you. Okay, Santosh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Vid. Uh, uh, Mr. Roman, uh, thanks for this excellent presentation. Uh, see, I have been uh, staying in Dubai since 15 years, and I have been seeing the uh, vision of the leadership, you know, across the public, uh, uh, you know, entities completely. That's that's very clear. One leadership thought, being very focused and all. But given all these years with all these excellence models existing, why is it that the private sector over here? is not able to align their visions or their goals in, in line with the vision of the, you know, of the leadership that is existing in Dubai. We, we know, I, I mean, when, when I landed here in 2005, I have seen it's, it's, all, it's all just sand, sand everywhere. It's all desert. But today you see on the, uh, you know, uh, for people who do not know, but you know, on the Sheikh Zayed Road and all, I, I have never dreamt of it. You know, but I, I see that there is, there is a gap. People are not understanding the, vision of the leadership i mean the organizations when i when i'm talking i'm talking purely about the private firms the government or the public firms are quite focused one vision very clear everybody is working together but in the private organizations in one of your points you said the ecosystem speaking to each other partnership and all but in this ecosystem every single entity is working in their own best interest there are a lot of excellence models that are available in dubai you know like the mohammed rashid al maktoum business excellence uh, Khalifa Excellence Award and all. And you know, a recent company which has followed the excellence model, Araptech, has failed. They have got into bankruptcy mode, you know. So I, I do not know. There is there is some gap missing, you know. Uh, I feel, is it the government has to take a bit more initiative on telling the organizations and the firms operating that, hey, you are here not just to operate, but then really raising the way the businesses operate here. Or how do we bring in this awareness, you know, I, I'm saying there is, you know, I'm, I, this is just building question on Dale, you know, I, I follow Dawn Ring Rose, you know, her extensive work, what I have been looking into all of this, but still, this question is always unanswered. That, but then, when we have all these excellence models, people talk about vision just to keep on their walls, you know, yeah, this is my vision, this is my vision, it's fine, but how can we really bring in that, you know, people are not taking the public sector as an example, you know, I come from India, where the public sector has isn't that much fine tuned, you know, but here, 
the public sector is a real role model they give a lot of insight you know everywhere you go so if mm. you can just uh, you know uh, this is my question jar you know that, that uh, roman you know this is my question i i more than that, that just an answer i and agree with you uh, dubai you is a unique in the world related with using this excellent framework in the public sector uh, if you see if you compare afqm bulkridge Uh, you will see majority of the organization are private business. Uh, but I can tell you that in Dubai, especially in Dubai with our stakeholders, private stakeholders, they are getting there. They, they are in the learning process. They are, we are engaging them to, to join us, to be part of this path. It will take time. But the, the reason I don't know exactly why in Dubai is lack of uh, using the business excellent framework in the private business But I'm very proud to be working in the public business and, and area in Dubai. And uh, probably Robin know more why to know private business are equal like the public business, but it's, it's matter of time, I think, I hope. Right, thank you. Thank you. thank you. Okay, well, look, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking at this point, because we are now at six minutes past seven, Uh, yes. May I have your permission to to include your email when I send out the recording to people so that they can carry Please. on the conversation with you? Please, and also, I'd like to give a little bit of a plug for the New Zealand Best Business Excellence Foundation, NZBEF. Uh, we've got a LinkedIn, excuse me, a LinkedIn channel, and we could continue the conversation there as well. So I invite you uh, to join us in New Zealand. Um, and I'd like to thank um, George very, very much for... Um, you know, the great presentation and you stimulated some great conversation. And Robin, thank you for chipping in and lending a hand. Excellent. Thank and you. thank you for your questions, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, okay. thank you. Both. Keep thank in you touch. Very, thank you, yeah. Vikas. Thank you very much, Robin. Pleasure, guys. Good Thanks. afternoon right. and good morning in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye-bye, everyone. I'll send bye. out the recording. Bye.